and welcome. There you go. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Tech Bits. I'm your host, Heather Lynn Sparrow with TrueKids1.org. I'm the director of photography, and today we're going to cover levitation, green screen, and Photoshop. We're picking up where we left off last week when we talked about Photoshop versus GIMP. Photoshop is a paid program through the Adobe Suite, whereas GIMP is a free downloadable program. Oops, let's see here. Can we get back to our slides? No. Thanks for your patience. I'm trying to move these slides. Okay, super. At TK1, our mission is to inspire K through 12 students to create, communicate, and collaborate in the digital age. Our programs are in school, after school, and we host summer camps all summer long. Levitation, green screen, and Photoshop. Here we go. All right, first things first. So last week we talked about Adobe Suite versus GIMP. These are clickable downloads, which you can click right here off the slideshow. You can get a free trial of GIMP. It will always be free. Or you can get Photoshop for seven days. Then it's a monthly fee for $20.99. If you are a student at UNM, you do get the Adobe Suite for free. So that's kind of nice. All right, pros and cons of GIMP versus Photoshop. The pros of GIMP is that it's very powerful and customizable. It helps you build skills that translate into professional tools. And most of all, the pro is that it's free. Now, some people say the con is that it has a steeper learning curve, but what I love about GIMP besides it being free is that it's customizable to your palette. So however you wanna customize it, to your palette, you can make it work for you. Photoshop has those too, but not nearly as customize, customizable as GIMP. Okay, so Photoshop cons, we know it has a fee. All right, let's talk about what you need. Anytime you're working in GIMP or Photoshop, what you're going to need is a lot more space, namely a removable hard drive. An HHD is a hard disk drive. It's a little less expensive. It's a little bit slower and it's good for photo, but it is affordable. You can use thumb drives, but having a larger, um, a larger hard drive like this, this in fact is a solid state drive. It's about the size of a credit card and it holds two terabytes. It is about $150 more expensive than the other, but it's twice as fast and it's great for editing video. These files get huge as the layers go on. And sometimes you'll find with an older operating system or a computer, all of a sudden everything stops working. Well, there could be two reasons for that. One is you have too many things on the desktop. And the second reason would be because you just don't have enough space to process a really large file. So that's why people like me who edit photos and videos have computers that have a lot of processing power because then we can move quickly. Okay, so let's talk about how we get the media from your phone or the camera to the computer. If you're using your phone, you can use Google Drive or Apple Photo. You can also hook up your phone to a cable and download it that way using AirDrop. Android users can also just connect a cable. Uh, if you're using a Mac, you can use uh, image capture to get the things off of your phone without having to open iMusic or Apple apps. Uh, if you're using a more professional camera, <clears throat> excuse me, then you'll have to use an S, you'll have an SD card and you'll need a card reader, unless of course the DSLR that you're using has Bluetooth and you can just airdrop that onto your computer as well. So there is a link down here below that describes that more fully, but we'll move on. And this is all information that's in the last class, Photoshop versus GIMP. Okay, so what you need to get started with levitation. You'll need a camera, iPhone or DSLR. 
You'll need a sharp image. That's really important. When we move images from one scene to another, it's very important to have a sharp image. And I'll explain what I mean in just a moment. You'll need a computer and you'll need a lot of patience. Both Photoshop and GIMP are not the easiest programs. It has taken me a number of years to move fluidly through them. And much, <clears throat> excuse me, much like living in Taos, you can work on it for 30 odd years and still find things that you never knew about. Photoshop is just like that. All right, so what are we gonna need? Props, we're gonna need a backdrop. A green screen isn't necessary, although it makes it really easy. You can use a sheet as long as there's contrast between the model and the backdrop. And I'm about to also describe to you what that means. It means that the model's really popping out from the backdrop because then when we go into Photoshop to remove the model and put it in a new backdrop, we don't have any issues. And that's also where we talk about having a sharp image versus a blurry image. If the edges are sharp and in focus, it's really easy for Photoshop to select it. If not, you'll need a lot of patience to select your image and I'll show you why. So actual props. To do levitation, you'll simply need a chair, a crate, a stool, a table, a ladder. Anything will do really to have fun that you can sit or lay on. Lighting, natural or not, it really doesn't matter. These days with DSLR, you don't have to have the fancy lighting that you used to have with film because you can set the camera or even fix it in Photoshop post. As long as your subject is fully lit, but not overexposed, meaning the light's so bright that you're losing detail, as long as you have contrast between the model and the backdrop, you're good to go. Photoshop or GIMP, you'll need one of those programs to do this lesson. You'll need in either of those, these specific tools, the rectangle tool, the copy tool, the paste tool, the eraser, and one of my favorites, the spot healing brush. Okay, moving on. So here we are with our good friend from school. At one of the schools that I teach at, we decided to just paint the entire wall green so that we have a full green screen because the kids love to do these kinds of assignments. What you see under our friend is another version of a green screen, but this one is a foldable one, much like the shades that you put in your cars to keep the sun out. This folds into a neat little circle and expands out to cover up all the things like the screen. And, or I'm sorry, not the screen, the stool that he's sitting on. Right now he's spread out between three different stools and the green screen is covering that, okay? So I'm gonna go on. So eventually we're gonna get to something like this and many versions of it. Another example of my work is right here. You can see that our model, who is my youngest daughter, Sparrow, who comes and helps me teach often, is in a beautiful gown. Underneath, you can see that we've lit so that the gown lights up itself. We've put her on the stools as well. And if you look to the right, you can see how I've desaturated the color, how I've turned her the other direction, flipped her upside down, and then in the very end, this is our final product. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it's done. And there's the final product right there. Okay, so let's head over to Photoshop next. All right, so, we're gonna start out first simply by having a blank slate. When we open Photoshop, there are a few things to know. On the left-hand side, always are the tools. The great thing about the tools is as you hover over them, they actually tell you what they are. What's beautiful about Photoshop 
and very similar to GIMP as well, is that these little tiny triangles in the right-hand corner Anytime you see a triangle in the Adobe suites, if you double click on those, they will open up two, if not five more tools. Like I said, you can work in Photoshop for years and find things that you've never seen before, but they try to group the, tr the tools as much as they can to relate to one another. So today I talked about using the rectangle tool, which we're going to use that to select. We're going to use the spot healing brush tool over here on the left hand side we're going to also use the eraser tool which is right here and again let me demonstrate these tiny little triangles in the right hand corner if you double click those let's take a look and see what else we have on here well that's a tiny little triangle to get there we go come on now all right, let's see if we can do it on the brush. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it won't let me. Now, this is where the patience part comes in. Honestly, some of, some of these apps, sometimes you have to stop, you have to restart, you have to be patient, you have to click twice, you have to click three times <laughs> because it is a machine. And sometimes it takes longer to process. So as you can see, I'm hovering over the rectangular marquee tool. Technically, I should be able to click this double and it should do just what I showed you earlier, which is show the other tools. But right now it's not doing it. So we'll try it later. Sometimes letting go of it and moving on. And also another thing that you can do when things stop working is simply go up here to the tabs, which by the way, have all the same things that are happening over here, the tools. In Photoshop, like I explained last week, there's at least three to five ways to accomplish the same task. So if you run into what just happened here for me, try going to file and save, give it a second, it's going to say save on your computer. I like to save it on my computer and not in the cloud because that way, if my internet goes out, which it does a lot here in Taos, I don't have to worry about that. Titling things. I always start with the year, then an underscore, the month, another underscore. This one's going to be REC underscore levitation. Now, if you were going to add your name to it to help the search engine find it easier when you're looking for your files, which are really hard to find sometimes, <laughs> you might put another underscore there and put your last name. So my last name is Sparrow underscore Heather. And that way, when I go to look in the search engine for this, it'll be really easy for me to find because I use these underscores. So now we're gonna go ahead and save it and say, okay, let's see if that fixed our problem of being able to get into our little extra things here. Still not interesting. All right, well, I'm gonna let go of that for right now because we don't actually need it. Okay, so moving on, the first thing that we're going to do when we open up Photoshop is we're going to obviously bring the image into Photoshop. So that starts at file, click on file. And instead of saying new, like we did last week, we're just going to simply say open because we're going to open a photograph that's a JPEG and work on it. So here we go, open. And now we're in our finder. I've brought this into a thumb drive called No Name. And here you can see I have my folder called Levitation. I prepared my files before I came to class. It's a lot easier if you know where your things are. But again, patience, it all takes time. And I'm going to preview to see where my images are. And we'll go ahead and bring this one in. So go ahead and click open and voila, there it is. Okay. All right. So I've got all these things going on because I was playing earlier. Okay. 
So now we've got, let me just go through these other files here to make sure. And then I'll tell you <laughs> what outrageous things I've been doing here. Um, okay, so let's go back to this. All right. Oops, stop that now. Okay, so now we've got our original file that we've brought in. Okay, let's, I'm gonna just open all of these up so that you can see one by one. Okay. All right. So this is the original file, which I've just opened up on this tab to demonstrate opening the new file. When you get into a file like this, the very first thing that you always want to do is duplicate the layer. So up in the tabs, the fourth on the right under layer, you're going to say duplicate layer every single time. This gives you an opportunity to label it at the time. I'm not gonna do that right from the beginning. I wait until I actually do some edits and then I name it based on the edit that I do. Now, remembering from last week, when you're working in Photoshop on the right hand side, all of your layers exist. The layer on the very top is the layer that you're seeing right now. The layer underneath is the copy. These eyeballs on the left turn on or off the layers. As you can see, I just turned off the background layer. I can turn off the background copy. And if I was to do the second copy, now we have nothing at all, okay? That can be very useful as you work on the layers. So the reason why we always make a second layer, if not three, I usually make three to five layers and copies of the original is because if you notice in the background here, there's a tiny lock on the right-hand side. The reason why it's locked is because we're working on a JPEG. When you use a JPEG instead of a raw file to work on, it has a lot less data embedded in the photo. So as you work on it, it actually degrades the photo. Have you ever opened up a photo after working on it numerous times and you go to make a print and all of a sudden it's highly pixelated? This is why. Most people don't tell you that the more that you edit an image on your phone that is a JPEG, the worse that it becomes pixelated. So you go to blow up this image that you've been carefully editing on your phone and it's a mess. All the edges are soft. You're not able to actually do any extra edits on it. So this is why this layer is locked and why we make multiple copies of the layers that we're working on. Also that way, if you make a mistake, you can just go back, okay? So let's talk about that for a moment. If you've made a mistake and you wanna go back, on a Mac, it's Command Z. But in Photoshop and or in GIMP, if you go back up to the tabs again on the top and click specifically on window, look at all these options. These options are what you're seeing in both the tools, the layers, the channels, the paths, but specifically history is really important. And here's why. If you take a look right here, I've just opened and closed the history. Now I've closed it. I'm gonna go back to window. I'm going to go down to history and boom, there it is again. Why does it matter? Well, I'll tell you, if you decide you don't care for what you've done, you can go back in the entire history. So if you don't like what you've done, you keep scrolling back in the history until you see what you like and you can pick up from there. All right, so moving on. Okay, I'm gonna admit someone to class. Okay, welcome to class. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move to the next tab in our levitation. And 
Now we're going to see what you were just seeing. Okay, so you can see all these different layers. So now, because I have different versions, if you recall earlier, what I was explaining to you is that whatever layer is on the top is the layer that you're seeing as long as the eyeball is on. So now we have our good friend here and we're gonna go up to the move tool and we're gonna go ahead and select it. So you can see he's awfully skinny on here. <laughs> You can see that we've cut him out from this location here using the magnetic lasso. Let's do it together. So here's our original copy. As I said earlier, we're always going to duplicate another layer. So let's go ahead and do it. Now we have the layer that we're going to work on. Next step, let's grab the magnetic lasso. That's right here. I love the magnetic lasso because it's really easy to cling onto the sides. And this is where we get into a really well-focused image and or contrast between the background and the subject. Okay, you can see here he's got pajamas on, which really help him stand out from the green screen. Do you need a green screen? No, as long as you have contrast, check out what this tool does. I start with the arrow here, and I'm just gonna be a little bit sloppy at first. We won't get details, but you can see that it kind of just sticks onto his PJs there pretty simply. And I'm, I'm being not very careful. You can see up at the top, just below our tabs, that there are some settings that you can use to adjust the tool, adjust how sticky it is to the surface that you're going along. Earlier, I talked about shadows. He's got a little bit of a shadow underneath here, which might make him look a wee bit skinny. Same under his arms. Kind of want to be careful for shadows, but still. You know, this is 10 minute levitation, not 10 hour. So here we go. Okay. So now you see what I fondly call the marching ants, okay? Anytime you're in Photoshop and you've got marching ants, you may not move on to the next thing until you complete your move with the marching ants. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hover inside of the marching ants and we're going to command copy. So that's command C, or like I said earlier, you're allowed to do things several different ways in Photoshop, you can simply go into edit on the top and select copy, which also shows you here the actual key command for that, which is command C. I know that it's different on a PC, but my guess is that it's maybe option C or something close. Somebody can tell me in the comments. Uh, okay, so we're gonna say copy or we're going to copy here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our other tab right here, and we're going to paste it. And it's gonna say, are you sure you want the same profile? And I say, yeah, I do. So now you can see three versions of this. I just really wanted to demonstrate to you how it was done. Now, some may say, why don't you keep that all in one Photoshop project? I'm going to go ahead and turn this eyeball off since we already have twos. I'll tell you why. For me, it's a lot easier to go from one tab to another and copy and paste because, as you can see in this one, I don't have a separate background. But in this one, I went ahead for fun and looked up superhero backgrounds. It's really easy to find this online. And by the way, kids love this activity. I have adult versions of this too, like in the slideshow that I showed you with my own work. But for instance, let's just take a look at, let's see here. I want to show you, look at this. Here is, let me just get this off of here. Um, okay, I want to show you. Here's a whole thing of free Star Wars backgrounds. The kids love Star Wars. They have every kind of backdrop you can imagine. 
And you're allowed to download any of these for free. And you can see that, you know, once you really get into Photoshopping, there's a lot of fun things that you can do with it. So let's go back to our Photoshop. I decided to go ahead with this space theme. So in our layers here, you can see that this is the layer that actually has all of the green removed. So I'm going to double click that so I can name it and say model no green screen. I'm not going to say screen, but that'll work for that. OK, so now we know what that is. I'm going to shut it off and demonstrate how do we get rid of the rest of the green screen here? Let's take a look. So if you recall, the eyeballs that are off are not showing these layers which are above, but normally whatever's on the top is what you see as long as the eyeball is on. Whatever layer that you want to use to edit is the layer you should select and click on. So we're going to work on layer three, which is the model with the green. Now, first of all, it's kind of hard to see it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to command plus, which blows it up for me so I can see a little bit better. And I know you're seeing that stuff in the background, but I'll tell you what was there. I'm erasing the person who was there so I can replace our friend here. Okay, so here's our good friend. And the green screen is still there and we want to get rid of it. So now we're going to use this thing called the magic wand tool. Now you could use the magnetic lasso tool and you could go around and select all of this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate both. Here it is with the magnetic lasso. You can start your line, okay? You can click where you want it to stop on a corner. I'm clicking now. I'm clicking now. I'm clicking here and I'm clicking there. Okay, so now at the very end, you're gonna connect the dots, hey, marching ants. And you can simply press delete and it's gone. So that's one way to address it. Another quicker and more efficient way is, oops, excuse me, magnet tool wants to go. Okay, so underneath the magnetic lasso tool is the magic wand. We're going to click on that. And earlier when I was describing where the tools preferences are, that's right here. Okay, so you can see the magic wand tool is selected. If you click on the triangle, it doesn't have any presets for this. You could make presets if there's something special that you enjoy. Here's the sample size where it tells you what size you're actually sampling of the points. And the tolerance is how much or how little it clings to the side. So let's try it and see what happens. So we go into the green, we select, and look at that. It's a lot faster than the magnetic lasso and we simply delete. Okay, let's do it again. Here's another piece and we delete. It's so, so easy. And the biggest thing to remember here is that we are editing on the layer that we have selected. If for instance, I was to click on the layer below and we have our marching ants right here and I click delete, nothing happens. I'll click delete again, nothing happens. And you can see it right here in the history. The reason why nothing is happening is because I'm actually on the wrong layer. So I'm gonna go back to the magic wand in my history, here we go. And now we're back where we need to be on the layer that we're editing. All right, so here we, here we go, delete. And there's a little piece of green right there. We're gonna delete it. How about there, delete it. A Little bit there. All right, so now, Here's the part that's going to be a little more difficult where his lightsaber is, but let's try it. Let's see. We got that. Uh huh. And you can see up in the right hand side, right here, where the history is, every single move that I'm making, it's recording that move. 
so that if I want to go back and change my mind, you can. Or you can simply command Z and it will do it for you. Okay. So now we have all of that cleaned up. And I will zoom back out again so you can take a look. So there's a couple of things. We had some chords that you can see right here. And there's a chord right here. That was from the lighting that we had set up. So now I'm going to go ahead and erase those chords. But instead of using the magnetic lasso or the magic wand, I'm going to use the eraser tool because it works really good. And here it is, the eraser tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the eraser tool. I'm selected the proper layer, okay? Which now we can change this to model no green screen, okay? So now we've got two models, no green screen, but this one is going to be the bigger version, okay? So now I know what I'm working on. All right. Now we have the eraser tool right here. So again, if we want to take a look at the preferences on the eraser tool, we can see that we've selected the eraser tool. And here is where we open our brush preferences. There are all the different sizes. If we want to select a bigger size, then we can. Or if we want to do more detail work, we can select a smaller one. Now for this particular image, I'm gonna blow it back up again so that I can see very clearly. That's how I get better detail. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the eraser tool right here and I'm going to click, okay? So I'm noticing, let's see if you can see that too. It didn't erase it all the way. I wonder why? Well, I'll tell you. It didn't erase all the way because in the preferences right here, under flow, it says 56%. So maybe we want something to be a little bit see-through or transparent. You might want the opacity to change. All of those things happen here. So because I want the cord completely erased, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the flow all the way up to 100. Let's try it again. And there it is. Now it's completely erased. So to go in and get the rest of this cord, let's use a smaller size. Okay, let's go in and we got it. Okay, look at how easy that is. Okay. So now we still have these two pieces here, and we've learned three ways now that we can erase a background from the original image. Those three ways are the magnetic lasso, the magic wand, and the eraser. Once more, to erase the background, we've used the magnetic lasso, the magic wand, and the eraser. So let's just test out the magic wand again and see if it will pick up this cord. And sure enough, it does. Isn't that awesome? So now that you've got the marching ants, you simply click delete. Let's try it on this little piece of green here. Oh, it doesn't like it. Now you see here how it didn't really want to pick up the rest of it. And I'll tell you why, it's because the edges are getting pixelated. You see that? Now that we've blown it up, it's really hard for it to grab the edges. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the eraser tool. Let's make this brush just a little bit smaller. Okay, cool. And let's see here even smaller still, a little bit more. Okay, so as you can see, I'm hovering over this, but nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Well, I'll tell you, you've got marching ants. If you remember earlier, I was sharing with you that if you ever have marching ants, you can't make the next step. 
And the reason why is because Photoshop is waiting for you to complete the move that you did. So if you want to get rid of the marching ants, we just simply go back to our magic wand. We click on it two times and now it's gone. Now we're going to go back to our eraser tool and we're going to go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so we got rid of that. We're going to be real gentle along here. And you can see that I'm being careful to get rid of the green, but not the pajama. Okay, super. All right, so now let's move our image over. I see a little more of the green screen here, so I'm gonna just quick clean it up. There we go. You can see how smooth and easy that is. Very good. Okay, maybe we'll take just a little bit extra off of the corner here where his cast is. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go back. Okay, so now we can see, all right, we still have a little bit under the chin to handle here and the cord here. And after that, we're pretty much done cutting our friend out. So let's just finish up with that chin. Now, again, we have learned three ways to go ahead and erase these things. We could use the magnetic lasso tool. We could use the magic wand tool, or we could use the eraser. I think for this job, I'm gonna try and see if I can make the magic wand work because it's gonna be hard to get in there with an eraser under his chin. So let's see if we can do it. Hey, that looks pretty good. Let's try it. And we delete and then there and we delete. Now that might be a little funky under his chin. Let's see. Okay, not bad, okay. All right, and so earlier I was talking about having a really, really crisp photograph. When I'm blowing this up, this is a phone photograph, by the way. The other one that I made is from a DSLR and you'll see the difference in the pixelation. You can already see that because this is a phone photo, it immediately pixelated it when I brought it in. But still, if you're only going to show it at a small size and it's just for a phone, it's just fine. If you're going to make a fine art print, you need a sharper photo. All right, look at our kid now. He's doing great. So let's go then to the move tool. I'm going to zoom back out again so you can take a look. Now, earlier, I showed you that we went into the Google and looked up backdrops for superheroes. So this happens to be one. There were many Star Wars backdrops. As you can see here, I also have cities. You can get thunderstorms. I mean, it is endless, the amount of free things. And if you have an Adobe uh, subscription, you can go to Adobe Stock Photos, which also has a tremendous amount of information, photos, tutorials, much like this one, um, where you can download for free all kinds of things. So now that we have this brought in, let me just demonstrate real quick so that you know how to do it. If I was to say, make a screenshot online of this city and I wanted to bring it over I would simply use the rectangle tool, which is right here. I would select it. I would create marching ants. I would command and copy. And then I would go back into our file and command paste. And look at that. Now we have a whole city in there for our friend to fly in. So now that this is layer six, I'm gonna double click that and I'm gonna say cityscape. Cool. Okay, so now since this is covering up everything, we either have the choice of turning the eyeball off or putting it underneath our other things, okay? 
let me just do that move again so you can see that whatever layer is on the top with the eyeball turned on is the layer that you see first. So for instance, if I were to click the eyeball off, you no longer see that layer. If I leave it on, but I select it and put it underneath our model, look what happens. It's amazing. All right, so let's not forget that we still have a cord hanging out of his knee, but for fun, let's edit it now on the cityscape. So we go back to our model, no screen, bigger. We click on it because we know that whatever layer we're clicked on is the layer that we're editing. So we'll go in and we're gonna blow this up one more time, that's Command Plus, so that we can see what we're editing easier, Command Plus. Okay, so we can see that our friend, the superhero has this cord sticking out of his knee. So we'll go ahead and use the eraser tool for that. And really, this is just about preference, depending on how you like to move through your workflow, you use the tools that work for you. And, you know, as time goes on, you'll figure out what, what works. So here we go. We have full flow and we are getting rid of, you can see at the bottom part of his knee, little by little, that cord is disappearing. And you can see that each time I click up here in the history, you see eraser, eraser, eraser. If I were to go back, I said, oh, you know what? I took too much of his pajama there and now I've made a mistake. All I have to do is go back in the history and it takes me right back to where I was. Let's do that one more time. Shoot, I've made a mistake. I just go into the history and I go back or I've made a mistake and I command Z, which also does the same thing. Okay, so let's finish up this little edit on his pajamas. Here we go. And we'll call that pretty good. I see a little line here from earlier. We'll clean that up. Now, if I was spending a long time and doing this for a client or for an art piece, I would go around and clean up every last one of these edges, making sure that it's feathered, that you wouldn't see these rigid pixels. But I'm showing you this way to demonstrate so that you understand how important it is to have a really crisp photo when it comes to something like levitation. If you're showing it on your phone, which most kids do, it's not as important. If you're making a fine art piece or doing this for a client, obviously not only a really crisp photo, but also feathering out and smoothing every single one of these edges so that it's seamless and believable. Okay, so now we'll zoom back out and we've got this great flyer. Well, how do we move him? Because maybe this position isn't the best. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the tabs into edit, click on edit, and right down here where you see free transform, which can also be accessed through a key command, which is command T. We'll go ahead and click on that. And we're going to make him just a little bit smaller for fun. And if you can take a look up here, here are our preferences. Here's the width and the height. If you want it to go ahead and maintain the aspect ratio, you click that and that makes it so that it all stays the same aspect ratio. Okay, if you don't have that clicked, what happens is it starts to deform. You can go one way or another like this and whoa, he's gotten really skinny. Well, we don't really like that. So we'll go back and back and back. Okay, so now he's regular size again. Okay, and we can go ahead and click that on. It's black when it's on. 
and we can make it maybe a little smaller or larger that's up to you and then if you want him to fly say like superman you can see this little arrow right here and you simply just move him back and forth okay really easy so now we've got him flying and we double click that thank you for your patience i'm just gonna turn this mail off i can hear the mail clicking nope that's not what i'm looking for oh my goodness okay here we go excellent okay back to photoshop here we go okay so say for instance for fun you would like to add another flyer why not so earlier I showed you how to duplicate layers. Let's do it again. So now we're on the model, no screen, bigger. We've selected that layer. We go to layer and we say duplicate layer. So let's just say model, no screen, bigger copy, underscore two. We say, okay. Now you can't see it because it's on top of the other one, but check this out. This is the move tool. If I select it and then I move him, oh my goodness, now we have two. What if I want another one? We take the layer, we duplicate the layer, and we say, okay, here's another copy of this. And now we take the move tool and we can move it here. Oops, take it back. Let's see, did we get it? Yes, we did. Okay. No, nope, there's only, oh, I see it copied this one here. Yep. Okay. So now we have three flyers. You can see how much fun you can have with this. You can duplicate the flyers. You can make them go different directions. So say, for instance, I want to make one go one way and one the other. We go back up to edit, free transform, which can also be accessed by the key command, command T, okay? And then you can see these little arrows right here. Well, what if we want this one standing up? Well, we can go that way. What if we want them upside down? We can go that way. Anything that excites you, you can do it. And if you change your mind and you don't like it, you just go back, Command Z, and it's back the way it was. All right, moving on. So we're gonna get rid of these other copies. We're gonna select on the model, okay? You've seen how we can move it around, but now for fun, let's get rid of this backdrop. And instead, now we're gonna put our flyer out in space just for fun. So you can see here when I pulled in this, there was already a superhero there. And I began to erase that superhero to allow our flyer to come in and be placed there pretty seamlessly. I'm gonna show you how I did that, okay? So originally, if I take this eyeball off and turn the original copy on, you can see that there's a gentleman powering up. Let me show you how I fixed it. So you can see all the way down on layer one, I've selected that layer, which means I'll be editing that layer. And then I go over to this awesome tool called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. It is such a powerful tool. It used to be back in the day when they first made Photoshop, they only had a clone tool. Well, now they have a spot healing brush tool. And let me show you how awesome it actually is. All right. So we get a brush that's the right size. We click on the arm and we want it to disappear. And what this is going to do is sample the closest thing next to it. Check that out. So what it did is that I selected it and then it selected what was right underneath it and placed it there instead. So similar to a clone stamp, but even smarter, okay? It has content 
aware findings. So when you select it, it picks something that is as close as it possibly can to it. Let's do the other arm. Awesome. All right. So let's do this and see what happens. Great. Let's do the head. Okay, so you can see little by little, we can refine it, we can fix it, we can make it work for us. So I'm gonna go back to the original copy that I made and here it is. So you can see there's lots of different ways to fix it. You can keep spending more or less time on it depending on how far you wanna go. All right, so now we're back on this layer and we're going to select the model and place it. So moving from the spot healing brush tool, we'll go back to the move tool. And because our model no screen is selected, we're going to grab it and we're going to move it, okay? So depending on the way that we want him flying, we get to pick. So earlier I demonstrated the free transform tool, which can be accessed either by edit down to free transform right here, or we can use the command T tool, which does the same thing. Now, because the original superhero was going upwards, let's see if we can mimic that. So we've got our little free transform tool and you can see when we have it on the corner, it gives us a horizontal editing option. And if we pull away a little bit, you see it gives us a rotating tool option. So we're going to go ahead and begin to rotate right here. Okay. I think that feels pretty good for now. So if you like what you've done, you can double click on the inside and it will give you back the original. So I'd like to cover up the person who is underneath a little bit more. So I'm going to click on the model and I'm going to move them toward where the other guy was maybe about here. And I think, I think I want to make him just a little bit bigger because he seems kind of tiny in the scheme of things. So we're going to, again, do that by command T, or we can go up to the edit tab and you can see right here, it says free transform. Okay. In the transform tool, you can see all of these different options too. If you just want to do a quick rotate, flip the photo over like the one that I showed you earlier, transform will do just fine. Free transform just gives you more options. All right, so we're going to make him a little bit bigger. We want to make sure that we have got the aspect ratio on to maintain so that he doesn't get skewed out of shape and let's make him that big. Okay. And let's put him over here and maybe we want to tip him a little bit so his lightsaber doesn't get cut off. So that's going to be command T once again to, let's see, maybe we'll pull it this way a little bit to just shrink it just a little bit. Okay, sure, we'll go with that. Okay, so since I can still kind of see the guy underneath a little bit, I'm gonna do two things. You know, we could really spend hours and refine and refine and refine this until it's exactly the way that we want it. But really I'm trying to show you quickly how to get started and all the rest after that is up to your personal preference and patience, really how far you wanna go. So let's just close the eyeball on that for a second so that we can clean up this right here. We're gonna go back to our spot healing brush tool 
And I'm going to go ahead and just select this. Okay, good. And it's selected this area here just a little bit more. Okay. So that looks pretty cleaned up. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the model again. Okay. So I would say that the biggest thing that I would like to do is I'd like this part right here where he's coming out of to perhaps be a little more seamless. So to do that, you can see that I'm still on the layer copy. Okay. I'm going to go in, I'm going to disappear our model for a second. And with the layer copy on, I'm going to go back to the rectangle tool and we're going to do a little copy and pasting. And here's how it's going to go. I really like how the light and the clouds and everything kind of come off of his foot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that right here. And I'm going to get in the center of that. I'm going to command copy, or again, you can go up to edit and copy. And here it shows the key command, which is command C. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and you see the little scissor that lets you know that you're copying it. And then I'm going to paste it. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn back on our flyer. And I'm going to take this layer and place it above the model. Now you can see how, because that layer is above it, it's covering up the feet. But here's one more really cool thing I'm gonna show you before we close our class today. And that is when you're selected on a layer and you double click it, it gives you a whole nother group of preferences. Again, when you select a layer and you double click it, it gives you a whole nother group of preferences, specifically the preference of opacity, regular blending opacity or the fill opacity. Let me show you what I mean. So if you're trying to smooth out these clouds and make it look like he's coming out of them, you can use the opacity to bring it in or bring it out. So if you want the clouds to look a little bit transparent, you can lower the opacity or you can lower the fill opacity depending on what you like. So let's just go with that. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do on here is erase parts of this so that he sticks out a little bit more. Let's get closer and take a look. Okay, so first of all, this layer of the background, layer six, which we're going to call background small because it's just a fraction of the background. First thing I'm gonna do is take it and use the move tool to just go all the way to the edge of his foot. Then what I'm going to do is go back to the eraser tool. And you see here where it's very obviously a corner? Well, let's fix it up a little bit. Let's see what we can do to make it look a little more cloud-like. Now, if you recall earlier, we have a flow here, which is at 100%. If we don't want it to be so obvious, like this is right here, then we change the flow rate to something lower so that we can enjoy the transparency of it. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So you can see here, now we're at 66. And maybe that will help us make it look a little more like clouds. If we want it more, then we can drop it down again, same thing. Now we're getting that kind of misty feel. And we can keep reducing it so that it kind of makes sense. Here you can see there's a bit of a line. We can clean that up. Okay. And I see a corner here. Let's clean that up. Okay. 
great. So there we have it. And the last piece that I will show you today is how do we save it? Well, we go up to file, save. Okay, now the Photoshop file has been saved. If you save as, a window is going to come up. And as I said earlier, you're welcome to save it on the cloud, but if the internet goes out, you won't have it to be able to work on. So I'm saving this on the desktop right now. It's asking for the format. You want to save the first one in Photoshop. What that does is it saves your layers and enables you to go back and make changes and continue to work on your art. If you're making a copy, you select save a copy, and then the format gives you choices like a JPEG. A JPEG or a Photoshop file are different in that the JPEG does not have any adjustable layers. It's just simply one imaged finished product. The Photoshop file, however, has all of the editable layers for you. So you're going to want to have both, but definitely make sure that you save the Photoshop file. And that should say Photoshop right here. All right, let me get back to my screen here. And as you can see, we went from this to this. And lastly, if anyone has any questions or troubleshooting, you can contact me, Heather Lynn Sparrow, at truekids1.org, or call my phone number and let me know what you need. Wishing you a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me today. This is Heather Lynn Sparrow signing out for True Kids One and REC Tech Bits. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.